Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. In front of me here, I have a Warhammer Age of Sigmar army. I'm going to end up painting all of these models with pretty much the same color scheme, but first I need to decide what that scheme is going to be. This is a bit of a stressful decision. I really don't want to pick the wrong colors and end up regretting it. So in this video, I'm going to show you my favorite way of making these hard color choices. In a previous video, I talked about how to choose a color scheme with the help of your computer. That's not what we're doing today though. Today is all about breaking inhibitions, getting in there, putting paint on models, and finding a scheme that really connects with you. Something that makes you love the models and gets you fired up to paint a whole army of them. So in this example today, I'm going to try to find a great look for a Slaves to Darkness army. These are Warriors of Chaos from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. I've got some brand new models that I'm excited to paint, but along with that excitement is some fear of commitment. A fear that I'll end up picking the wrong colors and the minis won't look as awesome as they could or as they really should. We're going to talk through a few tricks to help break out of that initial painting paralysis. As with many things in life, it's the first step that's the hardest. In this case, it's giving yourself permission to experiment and paint a few test models. Today's video isn't about brand new minis. Today's video is about some old, busted up models that I got off of Craigslist. Sometimes folks will get cold feet with a nice new model because they don't want to ruin it. There are a couple of ways to break out of that particular mental rut. In this case, somebody already took a crack at these models and messed them up for me. The previous owner used way too much glue, and they didn't quite put things in the right places. These used minis were cheap, and they're far from pristine. Glass half empty? No, 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 no. Glass half full. These will make perfect test models. I got them cleaned up as well as I could, scraped some mold lines, glued on a few missing bits, and got them primed. While I talk here, I'm going to get started trying out a bunch of different colors. The airbrush can lay down coats of paint nice and fast, so I'm starting with that. I got some different colors of primer on my minis, then I gave them all a zenithal highlight with white ink. Next, I'll squirt on a coat of translucent colored ink. I don't know for sure that this is a technique that I want to use to paint an army, but that's why we're testing it out and seeing what happens. The biggest question for the overall paint scheme is what my main colors will be. In this case, I pulled out a bunch of favorite colors from my collection. We're going to give all of these brilliant colors a fair chance to win us over. Before we go any farther here, I want to remind you all of two things. The first is to remember that this is only paint. If we don't like something, we can paint right on over it. And yeah, after many layers of paint, some of the details may lose a bit of their sharpness. If we get to that point though, remember this is only paint. You can also strip it right off the model and start over from bare plastic. I'm lucky enough to have these janky old models. For me, these are surplus. They might or might not make it into the finished army someday. Now, I know that most people don't have extra models. Even people who have a whole bunch of minis don't necessarily consider any of them to be extra or surplus or redundant. I know these little buggers can be expensive and precious. But again, it's only paint. You can paint right over anything that you don't like. And if that's not good enough, you can find yourself some super clean or LA's totally awesome or alcohol and strip that paint back off to bare plastic. The first step in this method of developing a paint scheme is to allow yourself to experiment. Take a unit of models from your Warhammer army and make the choice to use them as test models. This doesn't mean that those minis are wasted. There's no reason why those models can't be repainted to fit perfectly into your army someday. They're just going to go on a bit longer journey to get there, and along the way those test models are going to cause your whole army to look better. They're going to be the MVPs of the army before you even play your first game. We're not writing off these test models, but we are absolutely writing off this layer of paint. That mental distinction is the key to this strategy. By thinking of a unit of minis as a pile of test models, you can loosen up on some inhibitions, slap down some paint, and see what works. Hopefully you have a bunch of inspiration and ideas for your army. Maybe you've seen paint schemes that you really like online, or there's a scheme from the lore that you want to use. Or maybe there's a palette of colors that you're excited about trying. 
There are some great resources out there dealing with how to find inspiration for a paint scheme. In particular, a recent video from Dana Howell comes to mind. In my case, I have a bunch of ideas for this army. For me, the hard part is choosing which concept to go with. Well, we're doing a bit of dabbling to narrow that down. There are a ton of different techniques for painting minis, and there's a whole rainbow of colors out there. You can't try literally everything, but you can certainly do a dry run of the ideas that are on the top of your mind. For me, I was pretty sure that I wanted my army to have one main color for the plate armor. And I wanted that color to be something bright. The box art for these guys is always black armor, but that just doesn't tickle my fancy. We're gonna have some colorful chaos warriors. I was also pretty sure that I was going to use this airbrush ink technique. I've used it before, and I really like it. My dilemma was that I started with absolutely no idea of where on the color wheel I wanted to be. But hey, I was blessed with a bunch of janky test models, so I ended up doing the whole circuit and pulling out a whole bunch of really pretty inks to try as the main color. It only takes a few moments to lay down the main color, so I went nuts and made myself a whole pile of colorful dudes. For a few of these minis, I used a second color to try to get a bit of highlighting. But mostly, I just relied on the Zenithal Prime job as the source of color transitions and visual interest. I feel blessed to have this pile of minis, and to recognize them for the boon and the luxury that they are. You might not be able to see it, but I assure you I'm having a joyous time here. In addition to testing colors, this can be a chance to experiment with different techniques and to build new skills. After the fun colors were down, I loaded up the airbrush with a dark blue-black, and then I tested out my skill and accuracy in painting their capes while trying not to hit the plate armor. After that, I started purposely hitting the plate armor in some places to add shadows and dull spots. These test models are an open invitation to experiment. Experiment with colors, patterns, techniques, and art supplies. Because we've already written off these paint jobs, nothing we do is wrong. We'll find things that work, things that don't, and we'll probably get some fresh ideas along the way. Eventually, I sealed up the models with a bit of satin varnish, and I took them up to my painting table. I want to really emphasize this point. This process is fun. All of the pressure of trying to paint nice models is gone. No one but you is ever going to see these paint jobs, so it's fine if they turn out awful. At the same time, there's a really good chance that some of your ideas are going to work. And maybe they'll turn out even better than you thought possible. I ended up spending two very enjoyable evenings putting paint on these test models. For the brushwork, I filmed time-lapse shots rather than close-ups. There's no pressure to do anything fancy for the camera, I'm just slapping paint down, trying out different colors for belts and horns and fur and weapons. I'm also experimenting with different washes to see what might look good. Since they have so much armor, it actually didn't take too much work to start to get an idea of what the finished models could look like. As I was spending time with the various possibilities, I was imagining what a whole army might look like in that color. I was also thinking about ideas for basing. Speaking of bases, yep, these are on squares. These were a Craigslist find from somebody who may or may not have used them in some games of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. If I end up using them for Age of Sigmar, I'll probably paint them on these square bases, make up some circle bases separately, and then make the swap. But where are my guys from? A swamp? The frozen north? A demonic realm? Or maybe I'll put them on cobblestones, like they're invading some unlucky city. Just as I make test models, I also make test bases, and I collect them. You never know when it'll be useful to pull out a few base concepts and hold them up to the models like color swatches. If having a bit of modularity to your test models is possible, then I highly recommend it. For cavalry, paint the mount and the riders separately, then mix and match different ideas. Maybe attach heads or shields with poster tack instead of glue, and try swapping those around a bit. Anything to quickly try out some ideas. In my case, the previous owner glued everything down solid. Oh well, it's still a good idea. As I'm painting and thinking about what color this army is going to be, I'm evaluating a few things. First, do the colors work well with each other? Do they work with the lore? Not necessarily the GW lore, but do they work with the lore I want for my army? Does the look inspire any new backstory ideas? I'm also evaluating the practical, physical properties of my paints for this job. Every bottle of paint is a bit different. 
and I want to make sure that my supplies have the flow and coverage that make this game really work. I want to find cool effects that are easy to achieve, transitions and shading that really pop. The way the pros and cons of my paints interact with the strengths and weaknesses of my painting technique is a totally valid consideration. If I find a combination of supplies and techniques that looks awesome with very little effort, well, that just might be a winning ticket. If I find that an otherwise fun color of paint just isn't behaving well, one option is to scrap that idea rather than trying to swim upstream. Alternatively, I can wrestle with that tricky color, do some more test models, and find a way to make it work. These very practical considerations are one reason why I think painting test models is so valuable. Some color schemes may rise to the top for these practical reasons rather than pure artistic ones. A certain combination of primer, base coat, and wash may give such a fortuitous and effortless victory that your choice becomes clear. I'm cranking through these test models fast. I'm not worrying about details or highlights, and I'm not being too fussy with my precision either. If these super speedy paint jobs can look nice, then that's a really good indicator of what the whole army could look like. I think this painting exercise puts us in the right frame of mind for painting armies. We're working fast and trying to establish a few winning features on each model. You don't have to be an amazing painter to create an army that looks incredible. Often just getting a few features of a model really right can sell the whole effect. Maybe that's a great color composition, or color transition. Maybe it's an awesome wash choice, or a couple of quick highlights in the right place. Maybe the base or the eyes really tie everything together. Through your experiments, look for those wins that make you love the paint scheme. With a bit of refinement, we can find a quick and easy recipe that can be applied to a whole force in a reasonable amount of time and make it look awesome. Whether you're cranking out test models with an airbrush or dry brush or contrast paints or some other method, I bet that you're gonna come across some straightforward recipes that really work. The sweet spot is where the models, your skills, and your supplies are all pulling in the same direction to deliver a sweet, sweet result. Well, I ended up liking a lot of these test models. Most of the colors I used could look pretty cool. Liking most of my test models is a good problem to have, but I do need to start paring them down a bit. I need to make a choice here. For my army, I want a scheme that makes sense for Chaos Warriors, while not necessarily being common. Colors that match up with one of the four gods of chaos from the Warhammer universe can look awesome, but personally I do like the flexibility and mystery of picking a unique color scheme. A few of the best looking models in this lineup get knocked back a peg for me because they look like they belong to a particular god of chaos. Since I'm planning on making a video with this army, I'm thinking of YouTube as I'm making this choice. I want a color scheme that's going to look awesome and stand out. I also want a scheme that's different from other things on my own channel. I've ended up using some colors way more than others in my videos, and whenever possible I do think about trying to keep this in balance. This was really hard for me, but I was able to make a choice. At this point you can either gear up to start painting your army, or you can focus in and optimize some of the details in your paint plan. I decided to keep a few of my favorite test models around, and to let go of the rest. For the test models that I didn't love, I took them back downstairs. I figured I could get a bit more practice doing some airbrush sniping on the cloaks. One thing about my first round of models is that they look pretty lame from behind, so I figured I'd add a bit of an airbrush transition to the cloaks. These are models that are one step away from being primed over, so let's get a bit more practice out of them before we wipe the slate clean. I'm absolutely planning on starting over with these models, spraying them my favorite color, and optimizing my recipe. I have some stuff I want to try with transitions, the washes, and secondary colors. Because I'm planning on showing you fine folks my finished army, I really want to make sure that it looks as good as I can make it. It's worth it to me to do a second round of test models and to hammer out my strategy. When I've learned what I can from that first coat of paint, it's time to either prime over it again, or to strip it all off. If you paint with thin layers, you should be able to prime over a paint job several times before you notice a change in the sharpness of details. If you'd prefer though, it's quite easy to strip your models back to bare plastic. The first video I ever posted on this channel was about paint strippers. Here I'm using LA's Totally Awesome overnight. I find that it does a nice job of taking paint off quickly without harming plastic models. 
There are plenty of other liquids that can do a nice job though. In America, Super Clean is another one that I would recommend. I have no doubt the comment section will fill up with even more suggestions. With an overnight soak and a bit of gentle brushing, the layers of paint come right off. Again, these test models are in no way wasted. The only cost to testing out your color schemes is a bit of paint and a bit of time. If you have delicate models, do be gentle with the brushing step. Other than that, you can paint and strip your models as many times as you want. There can be a bit of staining on the plastic, but the 3D layers of paint can be completely removed from the model. Once they're primed, these will be fresh and new again. With this knowledge in hand, I hope that you can break through some of your inhibitions and painting paralysis. Dub a unit of minis to be test models, get in there and do some painting. I really love this approach of cranking through some no stress test models before I tackle a big project. It feels like a great luxury to paint without needing to care whether a particular mini will turn out well or not. It's the joy of painting without all the little worries that we somehow attach to our hobby. Along the way, I almost always learn something and find at least one awesome paint scheme. If you paint a few test models that you really like, so much the better. No need to repaint them, those can be the first minis in your new army. And when you're ready to paint the whole army, the entire process is more fun because you're not second guessing yourself and worrying about how they'll turn out. You know that you've got a great scheme and you know that all your minis are gonna turn out awesome. Wait a second Brent, what color did you choose? Well dear viewer, you're gonna have to watch the next video for that. Go on and make sure you've subscribed and that you've rung that funny little bell to turn on notifications. The next video should be a lot of fun. What is that next video anyway? Oh, oh my. Yep, better ring that bell. And better tell your friends, they're gonna wanna see this too. Get them to ring that bell. Okay, Goobertown Brent signing off. Preparations must be made. This is the way.